As I've done this a couple of times now, I thought I would make a video about how to use Google Recapture V3 in a .NET website. So this website is .NET Core. It's um, it's called Arcane uh, Woodwork or ArcaneWW.com. And as you can see here, it has a contact page. So we need a bit of protection from bots. So if you want to install Recapture V3, the very first thing you need to do is go to the Recapture website and you need to sign up for an API key pair. So with those with that key pair, this is how it works on the website itself. So this is the uh, CSHTML uh, um, page uh, for this here. So I'll change message and I'll just write hello and I'll save and there you have hello. So the very first thing you need to do is you need to load the script. This is kind of a razor syntax thing so but basically what it's doing is it's uh, loading the script uh, before all of this. It's um, it's a custom pre-scripts thing that I usually use for that purpose. So the script is loaded. The next thing you need to do is you need to assign all of this stuff, which you can find in the developer guide, um, to the button. So this button here. And then you need to install a, you need to sign a callback and that callback will be here. Just a, just a little getting off track here. There's a couple of different modes you can use for recapture, such as light and dark. There. So you press the button and so firstly here this is where your um what they call front end key or public key goes there's no i don't need to mask it because anyone can debug the website and simply view it so the first key goes here now what this is doing in the background is it's monitoring your activity within this website and that will eventually provide a token. So when I press the button, that will send a token to your designated function, which is this. So it does all its stuff with the script, uh, whatever it does, I don't know. But, and then it calls this function and it passes a token. So that token will go to this function here, which is the JavaScript of um, behind this page. So that will end up here. So you've got some regular error checking, what, what you need to do to get this working, to have this good, such as this. So, um, get element by it's getting this and this which is that and that and it's retrieving the values so here it's checking to see that there is a value in length sorry in name and message and if not it'll return and tell you to fill out the forms with a big alert. But if it passes that, it'll go to here. And what it'll do is it'll form a JSON body uh, for a post. And it'll provide the value in here, the value in there, and the token that uh, recapture creates. 
So you get the URL of the API that you have created for the site and use something along the lines of fetch. To this URL, creating a post with a content type and you're sending the body. So that goes from there, calls your API, which is this. Now, what you need is you need this. So this is a class and you need to, it's very important, the most important thing um, and where I didn't do so great in the beginning is this variable name here in, in fact, all the variable names here, they have to be exactly the same as all the variable names here. And we'll get onto that a little later. But, so what it does is you have this, uh, you have this class. And using from body, it creates an instance of that class and it pretty much populates these with the JSON that comes from your post. So from this from here you have this object with the value with ver with the values that come from here, including the token that recapture creates. Any sort of error checking you want to perform can be done from here. I think I'm just going to open this up. And then you get... And this is interesting here. So what this is, is this is, um, this is a pretty, pretty easy, nifty way in .NET Core to, uh, to poll the request for the web page. So not the not this API, but the request for the actual uh, web page itself. So that'll get you, so that gets the IP if you want the IP that is. And it also gets a referrer. If you're unfamiliar with referrer, um, it's basically if you go to a website but you come from a website, then the referrer is the website that you came from. And that can be useful. It's not entirely needed, but it can be useful. Now, here is your second, is your secret key. So I'm not gonna post my key because that would defeat the purpose of it. But this is where, well, this is something along the lines of where your key would go. So you have the secret key, and that's eventually going to go to here. But you got to create the object first. So this is the this is the second class. So all these values are going to be um, uh, the JSON packet that's sent back from Google after you send a second kind of API to Google. So it'll return success, score, action, uh, challenge, such and such. Score is the most important thing. Score is what it's all about in V3. Uh, note that one of the elements of the JSON package uh, is classed as error codes. So you can't have error minus codes as a variable name as it'll just break everything. But what you can do is you can write it like that or any way that you like. But if you do that, you have to tell it what the JSON property name is going to be about. So all these things have JSON property names, but it's pretty much just inherited from that and comes up with a naming rule violation because this is not uppercase. Not that that would work without them anyway. But that's a whole nother story. So, you initialize a class, or whatever, and 
now you get to the second API that you have to call. So what you do is uh, using .NET Core, use something along the lines of HTTP client, and now you need to form a uh, JSON body. So you send the recapture secret key, which is uh, the second key you get from Google, uh, the token created from the front end. Uh, if you wish, you can also get uh, the IP uh, and call it re remote IP in JSON. So you're kind of uh, just doing it on the fly. Doing it as a dictionary, which will be um, decoded, whatnot. La -da 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 -da. Well, there. Um, la -da -da, la -da -da. yeah, parameters. So now you send your post async to Google Recapture Site Verify with a JSON body, including the two key, the the key, your secret key, your token, which came from, in a way, your public key. And if you wish uh, for extra uh, protection, uh, you can use the IP as well. So you get there, do a bit of error checking just in case the success. Well, if the this is actually the uh, success is in um, uh, HTTP 200 code for the packet, which is not to be confused with. Uh, the success JSON property. So do your error checking as much or as little as you feel appropriate. But so after the API, API has been called, it comes down to here. Um, here, this is where you take the string uh, which contains the JSON, which comes from the post from Google and populates all this stuff. And now, so you're populating that, you have a uh, response, con response con contact, which I don't know if this works actually. Yeah, well, didn't. But anyway, that's this Majimbo over here. So, got that. Oh, actually, sorry. Uh, no, this is a string. So you get the string, which contains the JSON, and then you deserialize it into that one up top. And that doesn't work, too. But... You know what I mean. Okay. So now, do a bit more error checking if you feel appropriate. Um, Google suggests that you make sure the action, uh, which is part of said... That... And make sure that's identical. Uh, if you want, you can verify the host names just to be extra cautious. Um, I obviously did, so I thought it wasn't a bad idea, but anyway, it's up to you. Um, now you have a score. So this is what's, what it's all about. So as you were in the front end, um, it was watching what you doing what what you were doing and it formed a score and then finally after all that it retrieves it um it gives back the score and that's what it's all about so there is a threshold uh google suggests well google returns a score of 0, 0.0 to 1.0 and that basically 
is a score of how likely you are to be a bot. So if it's 0, 0.0, you're probably a bot. And if it's 1.0, you're probably not. So I have personally seen 0 0.7 and 0 0.9 so it's kind of, you have to really determine the threshold here. But Google does suggest that as a default, 0 0.5 is what you want. So you have the score. That's cool. In this in, uh, here, if you are above 0 0.5, then you've passed. If not, you can do something like return bad request and just forget the rest. But if you do get past that score and everything is good, you can do whatever you want. Such as in my case, I send it to a stored procedure and that's in there. But I'm not going to show you that because that means I have to redact everything and that's a lot of work. So that is basically what it's all about. And using all that, can send a message and hopefully you won't be a bot. Thanks for watching.